All right, y'all. Sculpture dowling. So we're going to just break it down into two different types of sculpture. Plus or minus. Reductive or subtractive is taking away to create carving, stone, wood, etc. Additive is adding to create or assemblage. So it's either plus or minus. Here's Richard Serra and there's just, I can't even show you the scale of this. Um, but he likes you to go in it and lose a sense of time and space. Here's an ancient Egyptian piece that is just low relief, whereas this is more of a medium relief. Here is a seven foot piece of jade carved. So these are reductive. These were giant pieces of stone carved. And Michelangelo would see the image in the stone that was trapped in there and he would carve it out. So for the test, reductive or subtractive, I'm going to show you this Michelangelo because it is halfway out the stone. He made tons of these, but it was him seeing something in the stone before it was carved away. And there are about eight of them on the way to see the actual real David, not the copy, in the Academia in Florence. Here's Bernini, whose uh, craftsmanship and, and knowledge and mastery of this was unbelievable. Look at, like, his hand in her, like indenting in her thigh and like making it look fleshy and it's stone. This is a nativity scene out of wood and he just used the natural curvature of the wood and kept going with it. Now here's King Coffrey. We're going to see him again, but you see his butt is stuck to that stone. He's not going anywhere. He's been like that for 3,000 years. So the Greeks started doing more natural poses called contraposto. Again, I'll go over that at another time, but it's a more relaxed to the side pose. Now here on, on an industrial scale with industrial tools, obviously, is the start of Gentiles reverence. He cuts out the big chunks. Then he takes a grinder and he starts cutting out little chunks. And this is the end result. So imagine you're walking by and you see whale tails. Not the kind you see in somebody sitting in class in front of you. These, just sticking out the ground. That's the end of those pieces I just showed you. Noguchi could carve stone so thin and make puzzle pieces. And I still don't know how he does it. Some of here is Brancusi, same here, Louise Bourgeois. This is Lafayette Square, right off of Poitras. And these were benches on one side. And on the front, there was like just this one little piece of metal, which wasn't worth anything. It wasn't copper or anything, but protecting the light. So these were functional art, these eyeballs. Well... After Katrina, somebody stole the metal off. She just died, and her foundation said, we want our sculptures back. So I literally drove by and took this picture out of my car window before they were taking these down. So people suck. Okay. She's a mean little French lady. If anybody has like a four foot, five foot something... Auntie or great grandma or grandma that could beat your ass still, like this is her. Um, this is the Terracotta Army. There's 6,000 figures. Metal. Metal. This is camel bone, um, but it's not really camel bones. She cast them. So these are stainless steel that look like. 
you know, my, mylar balloons, and this was actually in Night at the Museum, this, the two. So this is just random parts of stuff, and this is assemblage. So uh, for additive assemblage, I'm going to use this Louise Nevelson because she would just go around, she'd find scraps of wood and stuff in the street, and she'd put it all together, and she'd just paint it all black to make it cohesive. So on the test, additive assemblage. Same with this. You're putting things together. You're adding to it. Cry Cornell. It's a good old uh, Southern Louisiana girl. This is actual car parts, like doors and stuff. We have one of these Chamberlains at Noma. And that is assemblage or additive. Here's a crappy picture I took but um, out of a magazine but it's installation we'll get in that some more here's another installation because it's installed in the space it's usually multiples so Levine found a picture Walker Evans did rebuilt an entire room and then took a picture of it to look like the photograph Here's another example of installation where they painted directly on the gallery walls. Once they paint over it, it's a new thing and that's it. It's gone. Here's a crazy installation. I got to see this in New York and it smelled like old people. Y'all know what I'm talking about. This was all kind of boats with holes in it that were no longer useful. So she made a sculpture out of it. And I don't want a boat with a hole in it. Now I got to experience this cat or walker in person. And so you actually, once you step in front of one of the walls, your shadow becomes part of the piece. I don't know how she did it, but there's sound, there's movement, it's video. And you become part of master slave and it, it, it's, it was really um, emotionally hard to, to even be part of. James Terrell uses light. This is the light tunnel that goes underground in Houston connecting the two sides of the museum. This is also in Houston where you're supposed to go sit in there and just look at the sky like through a frame. And they can open and close that little roof. Picasso to his handlebars and his bicycle seat and he cast them in bronze and made a bull's head out of it. This is, she blew up a building and this is the chalk left over and then installed it. Here she's throwing words off a cliff. Using light again, Dan Flavin uses a uh, neon We'll see minimalism again, but here's Donald Judd. It's precise, it's clean, it's mathematical. We have one of hers, Barbara Hepworth, in the Sculpture Garden. Here's another Noguchi, and this is public art. I love these. They're beer can butterflies on wire, and so when you walk by, they kind of move and thing whatever but they're made out of beer cans this is from a cuban artist who's represented here in new orleans and it's just stuff he found off the street same cuban artist michael heitzer digs giant holes in the earth and we'll see that again we see site specific robert smith then made spiral jetty out of Salt and water to the Great Salt Lake, dirt, natural materials. It disappeared for a while, and a drought came, and it reappeared. And the sun tunnels um, actually line up with the solstices and have constellations carved in them. And that will get us to 
Earthworks Insight Specific next time. Thank you.